So what is a beat frequency? In this video, I'm going to show you some mathematics that will hopefully explain exactly what a beat frequency is. But then also, I'm going to show you a real-world example of how beat frequencies are used to help us in our daily lives. Let's take a look. So let's begin by looking at this graph. Any pure tone can be represented by a sine wave. In this picture, the blue line represents y equals sine of theta, where we see at the zero point for x, or for theta, the uh, value for the sine is zero. At the pi over two point here, the value of the sine is one. At the pi point, 3.14, the value of the sine is 0 again. Going down to 3 pi over 2, the value of the sine is negative 1. And then finally, we'll look at uh, 2 pi, or 6.28, and the value of the sine graph comes back to, uh, to 0. So now if we look at another sine curve on this same plot, this one in red is the sine of 2 times theta. So you notice that there are more of these waves than with the blue y equals sine theta curve. We say that this number here, this value multiplying into the, uh, into the theta value, represents the frequency. The higher this number, then the higher the frequency or the number of times that we see the valleys and the crests of the sine wave. So let's take a look at another example. Here you notice that there are a lot more of those, of those crests and troughs than in the previous example. In fact, if you were to count them out, you would see that there are 15 of them between 0 and 2 pi. And you'll notice here that the, the equation that I've graphed is y equals sine of 15 times theta. What we say here is that we have increased the frequency of this particular sine wave. Okay, let's take a look at this next, next example. It looks like quite a mess, doesn't it? Well, actually, it is two regular sine waves except that they are slightly different frequencies. And if you notice, the blue one here is the same as the previous example, y equals sine of 15 times theta. But the red one is just a little bit more, has a, a little higher frequency, y equals sine of 17 times theta. And a couple of things that are interesting to notice here, uh, while the, the frequencies are different, the height or amplitude of the waves is still is still one. Now you'll notice that some of them don't don't quite go to the one or the negative one um, and that's due to the inaccuracies in in the plotting program. But if this were per perfectly done they would all go up to one and down to negative one. Um, but the frequency as you see are different. Uh, also notice that they become in and out of phase, or they are in and out of sync, as we sometimes say, at different places. Here at zero, they're in sync or in phase, but then they start getting out of phase and they get wider and wider apart until one of them is going up and one of them's going down, but then they start to get back closer and closer together until they come back to phase but then they get out of phase again, and now one of them is up and one of them is down. And then they continue that trend on, if we were able to go further, we would see this happen over and over again. So what we want to look at with this graph and in the next picture is we want to see, well, what would happen if we added these two graphs together? In other words, if we played these two notes at the same time. Well, what would happen is we would do what's called uh, added, add, addition of the two functions, 
where we would take each value of the function, that is the vertical, if you picture a vertical line going through the function at any point, we would add those two values together. So let's start at the simplest one here. Uh, 0 plus 0 is 0. So we would expect that the addition of these two functions at this point would be 0. Okay? And at this point, well, let's say if they were in phase, the, the height of this graph would be about 2. Likewise, down here, if these were in phase, the height of negative 1 plus negative 1 would put us way down here at negative 2. But something starts happening as we get out of phase, as we get closer and closer to, uh, let's look at, at this point right here. Notice that one of the graphs, the red graph, is at, at 1. Let's say it's at 1, even though there's a little bit of error there. But let's just say that that's 1. But at the same vertical line, the blue graph is at, is at negative 1. So what would we expect to happen at this point on the graph? Well, positive 1 plus negative 1, the addition of those two functions right there would be 0. So we go here at, um, at 0, we go up to uh, positive 2, down to negative 2, but then we start getting uh, a little bit out of phase, and so now we're not quite getting up. Let's, let's take this point right here. So that, let's say that's about uh, 0.75. So at this point, 0.75 plus 0.75, since the graphs seem, graphs seem to cross right here, would be at 1.5. So it would only go up to 1.5. And likewise, let's say down here at, uh, well, here's where the graphs cross. Uh, at negative 0.5 and negative 0.5, the graph of the addition of these two functions would go to negative 1. And so it looks like the trend is that this addition graph is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets to this point where it approximates zero. But then as we, as we continue on and these get back into phase, you notice that, uh, let's, let's pick a point right here. Again, 0 0.75 plus 0 0.75 would be uh, 1.5. And down here at uh, negative 0 0.75 plus negative 0.75 would give us negative 1.5 and so forth until we get back to, to here where both of them approximately equal 1. And so the addition of 1 plus 1 would bring us up to 2. And down here, the addition of these two would be negative 2, negative 1 plus negative 1. Okay? So let's take a look at that. And what I'll do is I'll graph those two, uh, add them together, and graph them, and see what that looks like. Let's take a look at that. So in this graph, we see the addition of the two previous functions, sine of 15 theta plus sine of 17 theta. And as I mentioned before, you notice that there is a trend going on here at 0 uh, theta. The, the two values are the same. 0 plus 0 is 0. And as I mentioned before, it was very close at, at this point where both of the functions were equal to 1. And so you see it's going up to approximately 2. Likewise, as we go over to this point on the graph, they were approximately equal to each equal to negative 1. And so we're getting down to almost negative 2. But you notice that as we go along the, the, theta, the theta line here, the horizontal axis, that the value for the function each time gets smaller and smaller. It's like a swing that is slowing down. Okay, as, as, the, as the swing goes back and forth, friction works on it, and it slows down until we get to a point 
right about, let's say here, where the addition of the two functions uh, basically cancel, they cancel each other out. Okay, but then as we saw before, the trend was that they get back towards being in phase. And so the addition of them, uh, the, the addition of each gets larger and larger and larger. So here, uh, the value is, is at a maximum, and here is, it is at a minimum. And then this, this trend repeats itself again, and as you see over here, it looks like it's going to start all over again. Okay, So this is what we call a beat frequency. If we were to look at this as a sine graph, just looking at the tops here, going like this, And then back up to here. This is a uh, this is what is known as a beat frequency. Likewise, we could have it go up like this. So there's actually an envelope of these. Now, what this means in a physical sense, if we add two tones together that are very close in frequency but not quite the same, slightly out of out of uh, sync or out of tune, what we should hear is we should hear the, t the note, the combined notes, get loud, then get soft, then get loud, then get soft, and over and over again. What this sounds like when you play two notes together that are of close frequencies is almost a wah-wah sound. So this would be like wah, 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 like that. You'd still hear the approximate tones together. That's this line. But then the, the sound or the, the volume of that note would increase, decrease, increase, decrease, and over and over again. Okay? So that's what the beat frequency looks like. So here's the same graph with dotted envelope lines around the sine wave and you can see that they uh, have a frequency of about two which is indicative of the the up and down of the volume of of the addition of the two sine waves okay so let's look at a real world example of the beat frequency something that you could see in in your everyday life. Okay, uh, what I have here is I have my, my handy dandy uh, ukulele, or ukulele as they say in Hawaii. This is my ukulele from, that I bought in Hawaii. Uh, it's made by the Keolani company, if you can see in there, Keolani. There you go. And it's made, it's a, it's a thin body ukulele, and it's made out of what they call zebra wood. Very pretty um, construction there. Uh, the zebra wood, and it's got a nice zebra wood headstock on there. And it's got these nice uh, tuning pegs here around it. I also have a, uh, a cheat, and that is I have a tuning, electronic tuning device right here that will help me keep my, uh, my guitar or my ukulele into the proper tune. Um, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But anyway, uh, the... The uh, ukulele is, is, is tuned uh, in the following way. It's G on this, this string here, the, the fourth string, uh, G, C, E, and then this is A, okay, G, C, E, and A, which is the famous My Dog Has Fleas. And again, and this one is a, I've tuned that to a low G string. Um, okay, so this is G. C, E, and uh, that's supposed to be A. Sounds like that might be out of tune. Let's, let's listen again. Here we go. That doesn't sound quite right. Uh, so, ugh, that's awful. Okay. So let's put it into tune, and the way one way you can tune, if you don't have an electronic tuner, is to make use of the relative tuning with the with the frets here. 
So on, on guitars and on ukuleles, the last two strings can be tuned relatively by pressing on the fifth fret. So that's, that's E. That would be F. That would be F sharp. G. G sharp. And then finally, so these frets are half steps. So E, F, F sharp. G, G sharp, and and A. There we go. Okay, so if that's A, then this one should also be A. And I think you can hear that those are slightly out of tune. And okay, not quite right. So if we play them together at the same time. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding, like in the graph that we showed earlier, we're going to be adding this sine wave plus this sine wave. And when they're slightly out of, out of tune or slightly different frequencies, you remember that we got beat frequencies. So let's listen to those beat frequencies and see if we can hear them. Ready? Okay, it sounds pretty, pretty awful. And in fact, what, what's awful about them is that you're hearing that beat frequency uh, very, very fast. So these are really far out of tune. So it's, it's going, the beats are going wah, 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 so fast that you hear that almost like a third note in there. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this string here and make it a little bit sharper. So using my tuning peg, I'm going to do that. this real quick. Okay. Right there. So let's see. So that one. Oops. Still pretty bad, huh? Right, let's 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 increase the frequency of this one. Oh that sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah, how about that one? So we have Listen, I'll play them together. So we're still hearing the beat frequency of wah, 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 wah. So let's increase it just a little bit more. Okay, how about that? Let's listen and see what we hear. So there you can still hear the beats, but they're a lot slower. They're going... Wah, 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 like that. Listen again. So let's, let's increase it just a little bit more and see what happens. And I think I got it this time, but let's, let's, let's check. I don't really hear any beat at all. Maybe like wah, wah. But that means we're really, really close. Yeah, I don't hear any, any at all. But that means that now that, that this, this string is, if this, if this is, oh, excuse me, if this is, if this is E, then this is A. So now, if I play, it sounds, it sounds correct. And so we can. Now it sounds like a like it's in tune. So there's a place that we can use beat frequencies to do real world uh, tasks. Okay.